in this lesson, we're going to continue working on the session that we've been working on the last couple of lessons. It looks like this. We've got five tracks, numerous clips and different sounds. It sounds great when we play it here, but it's not right now possible to play this anywhere else. To be able to play it anywhere else, we need to export it as a single file. A single file that can be played in iTunes or Media Player as a podcast or anything else. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can export a file and how we can publish it. And finally, we're going to save our session. Let's start by looking at the export. If we press the export button, we get the export menu. At the top here, we can give our file a name. So let's start by doing that. Let's just call it test. And right now we can see it's called test.wave. And that's because down here we've chosen the wave format. Wave is just the name of a specific format for a file. In this case, wave means that there is no compression. And that means there is no loss to the sound. The thing about wave files is that your files can tend to be quite big. And sometimes you would like to reduce the size of your files. And that's called compression, meaning that you make something smaller. There are a number of different companies through time that have created different formats for doing that. One of the most well known must be MP3. MP2 is from the olden days, especially used in the broadcasting business. Apple made AAC files, which basically very much like mp3 files and quite good to be honest and the latest member to this compression family is opus it's brand new it's open source and it's very very good anyway for now i'm just going to stick to our WAV file there's a number here that you might want to keep an eye on and that's the size of the file if we exported our session now, this is the size that the file would be. Let's try to see what happens if I choose to use Opus. Then the file will be considerably smaller. But for this lesson, let's just stick to a WAV file. Now, underneath the WAV file format, we can see the encoding. In the drop down menu here, I can choose between mono and stereo. And the difference between mono and stereo is that stereo is two tracks with a left and a right. And mono combines the left and the right into a single track. So if I choose mono, we can see the size of the file would be half as big. If you were only exporting narration, using mono would be fine. If you do have a segment that has music, you might want to consider using stereo. We have some more options down here. In the pro version, it's possible to set your loudness target. Here we can choose what the overall level should be of our file. Understanding what LUFS is might be a bit tricky, but the short version is if you're doing a podcast, you would like to export at minus 16 LUFS. That means that the overall level of your file will have a specific value of minus 16 LUFS. Sometimes this is a requirement if you're uploading to a website. If you are uploading to a radio station here in Europe, the requirement is to upload it at minus 23 LUFS. If you are uploading to PRSS or anything like that in the States, the requirement is minus 24 LUFS. There is more information on our website about LUFS. It's just to say that in Hintmerk Pro, here you can choose your export levels. In this case, I'm going to choose minus 16. So now let's go ahead and export it. If you are working as a professional storyteller, you might have numerous different places that you need to upload your story. And for that, we've created the Publish tool. 
You find it up here and it looks like this. What we can do with the Publish tool is that we can set up all these exports in one go. So if I have a SoundCloud account, I can set it up here. My Libsyn, I can set it up. If I have a radio station, I can just set up an FTP for the radio station for my personal archive. And the point of this is that all of these targets can have different export formats. My SoundCloud could be an MP3 file. My Libsyn could be an AAC file. My FTP could be an MP2. And my archive could be a WAV file. Not only can we set it up for different export formats, but we can also set the target level independently. So SoundCloud, being a podcast, will be at minus 16. But for my radio station, I would like to upload it at minus 24 LUFS. And my archive, well, that could be minus 23. The first time that you open your publish tool here, it will be all blank. There will be no targets because we haven't chosen any yet. You add a target by pressing the plus button. And here you can see there's a list of different targets that you can choose from. And depending on if you are a journalist or on Journalist Pro, this list will look differently. In Hindenburg Journalist, for instance, you can upload to SoundCloud and Libsyn, but you will not be able to upload to PRX. But the idea being, in short, that you choose a target, you give it a name. Here you can choose the file format and the quality. So let's choose AC at medium quality. Normalization, minus 16. And all you need to do now is input your email and password for your Libsyn account. The story that we've just made, I only want that to go to my FTP and to my archive. So I'm just going to deselect these two and say publish. So now Hindenburg is creating the two different files that I need. You can see one is WAVE and one is Opus. And it's uploading them to the destination that I've chosen for my FTP and my archive. Now I'm being told that the upload is complete. I can just close this window. Now all that's remaining is to save our session. It's actually a good idea to save our session earlier on. So if anything goes wrong, we can always retrieve our work. But at least before you close down Hindenburg for the day, save your session. So I'm just going to press save. When we press save, we get to the save session menu. Here we can give our session a new name. We could also create a new folder that is just for our sessions. This way we always know where we can find our sessions. So we know we've created a folder called My Sessions and we're just going to save my first program. All done. Now if we open our Finder, we can actually go in and find the session that we've just saved. Remember, we made a folder called My Sessions, and in that we put our entire session. In here, we don't find just one entry. We actually find two. One is the NHSX file, which is what we call a session file. And the session file is just a tiny text file. You can see it's tiny. Down here, it's only 16 kilobyte, which is really, really small. And that's because it only contains text, text referring to the audio. The audio itself we find in this folder up here. It's called the files folder. These two files always need to live together. So what's going on is when you actually open a session, you open it by clicking on this file. This file will then say, OK, I'm a session and I need a speak. So this speak over here, I want to place that at this specific time in my timeline. So the session here goes into the folder and says, play this file at this time. Keep in mind that 
It's not enough just to have the session file. You need to have the files folder as well. So if you are moving things around, remember to move them together. And even better, if you do want to move a session like this, say to a stick or different destination, then the best way to do that is to use Save As. And by using Save As, if you do choose a completely different destination, Hintberg will make sure to create a session file and a file folder and have all the files that you need for that session put in the right place. I know that we might have ended up on a slightly technical note here. Let's go back to just celebrating that we've finished with our segment. We've exported it or published it and saved it. So now we can go on to create something new.